Hey guys, so welcome to the first Photoshop and website design tutorial in the series of six tutorials. I'm sorry I haven't made a video for a while, but I'm making a series now to make up for it. So in this first tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to design the header and the menu bar, and I'm going to be teaching you a bit of how uh, you should plan your website in advance of designing it. And then we're going to be slicing it up and we're going to be saving it as a few documents. And then in next week's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you what to do with those documents and continue on with this series. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing to decide when you're designing a website on Photoshop is the layout that you want. So I've quickly put together a kind of layout that I'm going for in this website design. So we've got the banner, we've got the menu bar, we've got main content, we've got a sidebar, and we have got, of course, a footer. Now, if you want to add adverts to your website to start earning money, I would place the adverts right here. This is a good place as it blends in well with the content. Now, the second decision to make is whether you want it rounded corners or um, block corners like this on your website. So once we've made these decisions, it's time to get started on designing the website. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up Adobe Photoshop. This is version CS3. Once it's open, we're going to go File, New or Control N, and it should bring up the uh, new dialog box. We're going to go for a width of 1000 pixels by a height of uh, 120. Um, now this is just to add, this is just for making the uh, menu bar at the top and the uh, logo space. So now that we've done that, we're going to press OK and our new image, there you go, is created. So that's all working well. We have our first layer, which is just a transparent background layer, if we see over here. So we're going to create a new layer, layer 2, we're going to call this. This is where we're going to add our background colour for the whole website. So if it's on gradient tool, you hold down and go to the paint bucket tool and obviously it's on foreground colour so we go down here and select the foreground colour that we want so for this I'm going to go for a, uh, a grey um, I think I'm going to go for a light grey um, I'm going to enter in here um, BBB BBB um, and actually we could go even lighter so we could enter CCC CCC press OK once you're happy with that and uh, paint the uh, paint layer 2 with the paint bucket tool so now that we've got the background layer, it's time to create another image, a new image, with a width of 960 pixels we're going to select this time, and a height, we're going to have the height a bit bigger. Now I'll explain why later on in the video. Um, so height of 150 and width of um, 960. So now that we've got this, which is a bit a bit, uh, bit slimmer, um, but it's got a higher, bigger height, we're going to go for a background on this of simply white which is six F's on the HTML color code. Now that we've uh, painted that, we're going to drag this layer, layer one on the new image, uh, into uh, our original uh, 1000 pixel width image. We don't have to save the second image that we made. And so now we've got three layers. We can get rid of layer one actually because it's just a transparency layer. So do you want to delete layer one? Yes. So we've only got layer two, <coughs> which is our background color, and layer three, which is the white layer, which is the content color. Now, this is what's going to be our content box for the entire website. So obviously, I said I made it a bit. Um, so we're going to cent sorry, we're going to centrally align this first, and then I'll explain. So to do this, press Control A, go onto the arrow tool, centrally align vertically and horizontally. Um, so press the two middle buttons. So now that's centered it exactly um, in the middle. To deselect, we're just going to uh, press select tool and select anywhere outside. You can do this uh, with various methods, but that's how I'm going to do it. So we've obviously got an equal equal amount of grey on either side now. Um, now remember, I said that it was uh, it, the height was more, so it's obviously overlaying a bit. This is for the drop shadow effect that we're going to have, because otherwise it will look uneven. So, um, as you can see, I've dropped it around. So, um, I'm going to re centrally align quickly. There we go, done. Um, so, now it's time to, I'm going to add a um, gradient, uh, sorry, a drop shadow effect to the main content bar. Um, this will just add a really nice uh, effect for the whole website content. You'll see this on quite a lot of websites. So, we're going to double click on the layer. We're going to go for, we're going to tick on drop shadow. On the drop shadow menu, we're going to select the angle of 90. And uh, as you can see, we've got a thin drop shadow layer here. We can make this more intense or less intense by changing the opacity or opacity. So I'm going to go for 50 on that. The distance we can change. On this, we want it to be a distance of zero, though, for this effect that we're using. And for the size, we are going for uh, 32 is a bit big, probably. 
uh, but that's just an example of how much it is. We're going to go for a size of 20. That seems, or 15. 15 is working well, so we're going to leave it at 15. So once you're happy with these settings, obviously you can play around as much as you want. It is time to start uh, making things. Um, obviously we've got the background layer um, and the main content background as well now. Um, so it's now time to make a menu bar. So to do this, we're going to go on to the rounded rectangle tool. Um, and you can play around with lots of these settings. I'm going to drag it down. Obviously this is going to be quite uh, quite rounded at the sides. Um, far too rounded in fact because of the radius that I've selected. So I'm going to change that to 5. That's a better one. So I'm going to drag my menu bar down across along here. Um, there we go. I'm going to drop it right there. Now I've done that, I am going to right click on shape 1 and I'm going to go up to rasterize layer. So now you can't see anything because obviously it's just blended in, it's just a shape. So we're going to color overlay it and obviously obviously you can see it, but we're actually going to add a gradient overlay to this. We're going to add a nice, this is quite a good effect, but it's not too professional. So to, we're going to add a professional uh, gr lighter gray to darker gray effect. Quite like the one you can see on the Apple website. Um, I quite like that effect, it's quite smart. I'm going to change the angle to minus, so we've got the lighter colour at the top and the darker colour at the bottom. That looks quite nice and professional. So once you're happy with these settings, press OK, um, and it's time to add the text to our menu. Um, but actually, we're going, yeah, we're going to add a logo first, above it. Um, so this is where you'd add your logo or your banner. Um, so we're, I'm just going to quickly type in some text. So Photoshop tutorials series there we go that can be my quick really quite awful logo we can actually add some colors to it to make it look a bit a bit more fun and um, we're gonna add a green select a nice green and um, we're gonna go for a blue as well again select a nice blue and last but not least we're gonna add a pink here that's always a good blend of colors pink purple whatever you want to call it um, once you're happy with this, obviously you can add your own logo in here, but this is what I've done quickly. That's quite a cool effect. Um, once you're happy with this, you can place this um, along the same line. Usually it's best to uh, place it along the same line. As you can see, it's right next to the uh, horizontal line, sorry, vertical line of the menu bar. So obviously it doesn't matter how much of a gap you have at the top or the bottom, we can change this a bit later. But I'm just going to place it there, that looks pretty cool for now happy with those settings. Okay, so now that's done, it is time to add text to the menu bar. So obviously make it the right kind of font size um, to fit in well inside the menu bar. So that's good. So we're going to type in uh, the pages that we want. Obviously you can change the font here if you want, but I'm going to keep it as it is. So home, and then we're going to do a few spaces on the space bar. Obviously there are different ways of doing this, but this is the way I do it. So home, about, and then I'll do an about 10 spaces, videos, 10 spaces on the space bar. Obviously add whatever pages you want in here. Um, that's up to you to decide what you want. So we're going to add a, hmm, a contact page, 10 spaces. We can add some more stuff. We can add a, you can add whatever, obviously whatever pages you want. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. So a support page, 10 spaces, uh, a store or a shop, an online shop perhaps. You could add forums here, or you could add, you can literally add anything, links page. Uh, we could have a, hmm, just trying to think. We could have an FAQ, a frequently asked questions, um, oh, that would be in capitals. You can have whatever you want on the menu bar. So once you're happy with the menu bar, drag it so it is roughly, um, roughly where you want it positioned. And then we go to the select tool. Select around the entire menu bar, fairly evenly. Um, and once you've done that, press on, make sure it's on the layer, the text layer, press on the arrow, and then you can, we can use the align tools. So we can align it, um, align the left edges, and then we can align it uh, vertically, centrally. Deselect, and obviously you can see that it's aligned in the center. We can shift it over using the arrow, key, arrow keys, so we're gonna shift it over 10 spaces, um, just so there's a bit of padding on the side. There we go, that's looking nice. So that is our uh, header. That's our header for our website, um, which we are going to now. Uh, we're going to now split it up. 
now that we're happy with the changes. Obviously you can do various things to it, um, but we're now going to use the splitting tool, the slicing tool, that's what it's called. Um, and we're going to slice around the header now. That's the first thing. Then we are going to uh, make sure it's make sure it's sliced evenly. Then we're going to slice around the whole menu bar. Um, shift it up a bit so it's on the whole menu bar. It's surrounding the whole menu bar. Now the last most important thing is to make sure you select the whole width of the page, the whole thousand pixel pixels of the page, like so. Um, that's important to do. For later on in the next tutorial of explaining how we're going to use that image. But so now you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and lastly seven, which you can't really see because it's the, the numbers going off the page, but that's seven slices. So now that we're happy now with that, we are going to save it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go file, we're going to go save for web and devices, a new dialog box should pop up like this, should fill the page, and then we're going to press save up here. We're going to save it in a folder which I've called website on the desktop. And we're going to just save it in here and we're going to save the type as HTML and images. And then file name, we're going to get rid of what it says and then we're going to type in simply header. Obviously you can type in whatever you want but if you type in header then it'll be easier to follow on with my next tutorials in the video series. So once we've saved it as header and all the settings are the same as the ones I've got here, then you press save and it should save, the dialog box has closed and obviously all that is left to do now is to save as, I'm going to save it as a PSD. In the website folder we're going to make a new folder called development and we are going to save this as a PS PSD Photoshop, uh, Photoshop format file and we're going to simply call this one, um, we're going to call this header. Um, obviously you can call it whatever you want but if you want to stick along with these video tutorials call it header. Once we've done that, we are pretty much finished for the first HTML tutorial, Photoshop and HTML tutorial in the series. In the next one, I'll be continuing on with this, so keep the files. Thanks for watching, guys. Please don't forget to rate, comment, favourite, and of course, subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Bye for now.